Hi, I'm Fred McNew, and you're watching QAC TV 7. And you're watching a show called Papa's World. This is a special summer edition. We bring in different authors, talk about their books, let you get to know the authors a little bit, and you know, give you a good reason to go out and spend a couple dollars this summer. I'm delighted to have Mark Ladinsky with me. And Mark, thank, thank you for being with us. Now, I want to tell everybody. You gave me the homework assignment, I think, <laughs> Thursday night. I, I spent uh, the whole weekend falling in love with your books. They're easy reads. <laughs> and a nice thing, about an hour and a half or two hours, if, right. if the grandchildren don't bug me. <laughs> but the great thing in the books, we have uh, Pirates and Hidden Treasures, Headless Horsemen, and we have Secret Societies, which I like. <laughs> and I think what's kind of fun, and we'll talk about this as we go along, because I'm going to be quiet in a second. Uh, you have a lot of, I saw Nancy Cook today. Your grandchild's taking swimming lessons at my house. I said, Nancy, you're on every page of every book. What do, what, what's going on here? Is he buying your crab cakes or something? She's the Energizer Bunny of oh, uh, Heritage So Society. thank you for being here. Now, Mark, thank before you. we talk about books, tell, about, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you grew up, yada, yada. Fred, I grew up in East Baltimore. Okay. Uh, I went to school at St. Wenceslaus uh, Parish School, high school in, uh, in Pennsylvania, college in Connecticut. Uh, my fa father and mom were just local Baltimore people. Uh, Dad worked for the city government. And uh, we were reared in a tradition of uh, knowledge, government, uh, all things that are uh, today, I think, somewhat lacking, but, uh, you know, solid basis of society. Respect for books. Respect, respect for, for reading, education, homework. And exactly. a little discipline, probably. Right? And uh, they would hear our lessons every evening okay. and do stuff like that. So, um, siblings? When, uh, siblings. I have an older brother, Rick, uh, a younger brother, Frank, and my poor baby sister uh, <laughs> is the youngest who wound up having three sons. Oh, so, uh, and she was spoiled. She was the princess, I know. <laughs> she was the princess. She was the princess. But, uh, yeah. uh after uh, college, I uh, went on to grad school and decided to uh, go back and teach. And I taught in a small college in Connecticut called St. Alphonsus. And you were teaching English? Teaching English okay. literature. And then I uh, started a course in Irish literature up there and uh, did very, very well. And then after that, got into uh, business ventures with uh, uh, taking positions at Coca-Cola and Westminster Cracker and different companies. And uh, when I finally moved uh, back to Maryland, back home, um, decided to come to Kent Island, which I will admit... you got a love affair. With was a, I day. have a love affair, but it was a stopover uh, as a teenager on the way to Ocean City. Sure. You mentioned Ocean. that in one of the books, yeah. or maybe all of them. Yeah. So, so basically, uh, uh, once I got here, I fell in love not just with the physicality of Kent Island and the beautiful bay, but with the people. And uh, a lady across the street from me, who is now 95 years old, uh, Miss Myrtle, said, uh, you have to join the Heritage Society. You like history, right? Which is said, kind yes. of the unsung hero of all three she, books, Missy I think. Missy Biscuit yes. is yes. in every, uh, right. Right. every uh, novel. And Miss Myrtle uh, coached me into the Heritage Society. I, I met some wonderful people from Jack Broderick, Nancy Cook. Mm -hmm. All in books, uh, all one, right. at least in one of them, yeah. And I decided that if I was going to do something, uh, I, I wanted to do something different. Uh, I read all of Nick Hoxler's books. Mm -hmm. I read Brent Lewis's great book on Kent Island. I approached Brent and said, uh, you know, has anyone ever done historical fiction? And he said, no. And I said, I'd like to combine all the great attributes and all the great history of Kent Island, but make it interesting. Sure. So a couple of things ticked off, which I'm sure we'll talk about. Uh, there are three or four main themes for Kent Island. Uh, basically, uh, the watermen with crabbing, oystering. You play a prominent role in all three books. The history of Kent Island uh, back from 1631 through especially the first book, uh, The War of 1812. And um, I decided to, to do each little book or novelette on one of those themes with fiction and, and uh, history combined. The next one will be on agriculture and uh, hunting. And then the last one, uh, unless there's more, uh, will probably be about the biggest 
aspect and value of Kent Island, the people of Kent Island. Okay. So you've got three done three and you've got two in your mind or you're working on now? Working on the, uh, the next one is called Pray for Rain but Keep Your Powder Dry. <laughs> so it's going to be okay. a farming, hunting uh, type thing. thing. So. Well, look, let's take them one at a time. Sure. Right? I've got some questions for it. And I want the uh, readers to know, I got a kick out of it. There's a couple of things. There's a wonderful history of uh, Kent Island and you use some contemporary figures, right, which we'll talk about. Uh, but you also, and I got asked this before, there's some nice little, I mean, for us deadheads, there's even a dead, you have the deadhead playing, I shall survive at a wedding, as people are getting murdered, or a person is getting murdered. Uh, just, uh, let me, before we get into the specific books, music interests, or just turn on the radio? Uh, uh, grew up a rock and roller from okay. the 60s, right. uh, mainly the Rolling I mean, a Stones. A lot of different, I think even oh, yeah. Meatloaf is mentioned. Meatloaf, yeah, uh, okay. uh, Pam loves Meatloaf, we okay. went to see him in concert a few times, but uh, child of the 60s, 70s, uh, very much into music. And uh, one of the people, I, I love Edgar Allan Poe, as okay. I say, I'm a member of the Poe Society, but um, is Stephen King. Okay. And one of the things that Stephen King does throughout all of his novels is he weaves contemporary songs in. So that's Which why you've done. there's okay, a lot of songs in there. Yeah. Well, let's go book by book, sure. all right? Uh, the first one, Captain Boyle's Treasure. Okay, you tell, don't give away anything, but you get them started. Why would okay. they want to read this? Uh, basically, if you've never been to Kent Island, this is a great introduction to Kent Island geographically, where it sits in the Chesapeake, historically, its role. And at the time I was writing this, we were celebrating the 200th anniversary of the War of 1812. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was always a big fan of Fort McHenry and the Star Spangled Banner and, um, you know, the, the whole idea that America was gelling and standing up for itself. And when I learned about the fact that Kent Island had some ties to the sure. War of 1812, it fascinated me even more. So uh, the gentleman whom this is named for uh, is a real Irish character who basically was a privateer on on a ship called the Chasseur. And, and that's for real. That's, that's for real. For real. Okay. And the and the people who are aware on the Chester River and in Baltimore, the Pride of Baltimore, the Chasseur is the Pride of Baltimore. Okay. So he came back uh, captured about 17 British ships. Was it, and that was in it when I was reading the book. What did he hang along the British coast? He and did. As they uh, came out, he, and, he and was 17 a, ships. Were, that's a lot of ships. The, the, the British had over 500 ships. Uh, we had to engage privateers right. to basically raid them. And he came down, had the fastest ship probably in the world, okay. a Baltimore Clipper, which was built in uh, Fells Point. And when he came back after raiding the 17 uh, different British ships, by the way, he posted in London the fact that he was going to declare war <laughs> on England. Well, you mentioned in the book he put up a, a poster. I don't know, in the I, coffee I, shop. And he actually scared <laughs> a lot of insurance people. They wouldn't uh, deal yeah. with it. So he comes back a hero. He pulls into Fells Point, And the people cheered and called him the pride of Baltimore. Okay. So and that's, that's why the name. ships come from. So the premise of the of the book is is based all the facts about uh, what happened on the occupations uh, on Kent Island by the British troops. They raided a lot of places. Unfortunately, we uh, had very little resistance because they had so many troops. But the premise of this is that on his way back to Baltimore, Captain Boyle goes right past Kent Island. And so the fictional part is that he stops and perhaps buries something on the it. island. Right. And then 200 years later, people of the Heritage and Society I, start and, to look for and this treasure. Interrupt. I, lo I love the way you weaved in a piece of cake, which, oh, by yeah. the way, we're, we, uh, tentatively, <laughs> we're, in, we're going down to Thursday. After reading the book, my now, best, uh, yeah. my best friends uh, down there. Uh, 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 a young lady, I believe something pointing out the wall or something and all of a sudden she finds, That's I don't want to correct. give away too much she away. Fi huh? She finds a, a partial map and then this starts cascading and throughout the book there's this theme that maybe the ghost of Captain Boyle wants this treasure found right. 200 years later. And so uh, the piece of cake is also in all three books. They're great, great people and great. Who's pastries. your favorite? I wonder who to ask for on Thursday. Do you have a down favorite? there, it's yeah. Joyce, Kim, or Kirsten. Okay, I left the message, so we'll go down there. I just want to taste the cake. <laughs> <laughs> They're wonderful bakery. And anyway, that's the premise of the book. Okay. And so it weaves and weaves until the conclusion, and then it ends with the 200th celebration of uh, Fort McHenry and and the. Uh, uh, 
proud citizens of Kent Island for what they've done. Now, um, a nice villain, right? You, and, uh, a nice villain. Who we, again, we don't want to give too much away. Kind name, of a creepy guy. His name is Horace Jeter, and I mentioned to Fred uh, prior to this session that some people believe he exists, and they told me they know where he lives. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. he's basically uh, made he's up. He's still character. driving that pickup truck, looking yeah. at people. Okay. So that's that's an introduction. So if you if you've never been to Kent Island or the beautiful Chesapeake, there's quotes from Smith in here that we are the largest island, but we're historically so important. After Jamestown, Plymouth Rock, we're, we're in. number three. Yeah. We're number three, and and we really focus on this introductory session. But it's a fun thing. And as one thing we didn't mention yet. I went to the Kent Island High School, mm -hmm. and I said I, I would love to have the artwork created Terrific stuff. by the students, wonderfully talented students there. And the staff and the people were so grateful. So all three books, different and sometimes the same students, have lent their talents Ships, to show. Ships, crabs, yeah. you name it. And they, we don't want, again, did. I don't want to give too much away, but it's... Uh, so so uh, it, it, they actually uh, go looking for the treasure very close to the Kent Island High School. So uh, it's kind of weaved in there. And my hope is that um, these students and other students begin to take an interest in their island and in the history. Uh, I'm very proud that at every graduation ceremony they stand up the artists and they basically thank them for contributing mm -hmm. to this book and congratulate them for being in the published book. And uh, make sure I get the right. This is the book where you bring in the experts from the University of Maryland, That's Hopkins, correct. and they're That's going correct. through the woods That's and that correct. stuff. So it's some, and it, you should probably uh, in the next year or two have a walk. And you can actually have kind of a walking tour of this book. Or maybe it, you've already planned that. Well, it's funny. One of one of our friends, Val, who is um, uh, associated with uh, Trivia Norm, uh, who's a good friend wants to do that, wants okay. to do a walking tour of all three books. It'd be good traping through the woods and looking at the big rock. Is, is, is this the book where the big rock is? Or, That's correct. Okay, which is good. Well, Fred, look, I can give you an A-plus for your reading Oh, no, no, here. let me tell you what. I, I, my wife will tell you, I, got, I didn't get the grass cut, I didn't clean the pool, <laughs> but I read three books. And let's move on. Now, here might be my favorite. i got to be honest okay. with you. Uh, the Headless Oysterman. All right, let me just cheat for a second. There's a... I'm going to let you give the plot and everything, but there's a great scene on the, there's a July 4th celebration, I believe, on the first tee of the uh, Blue Heron Golf Course. That's correct. And something happens there, which which is great, but I want you to know, I've lost my head several times <laughs> on that first tee, and there's a lot of things. But anyway, talk about that. This, to me, this was just fun. Cause you, when you, and one thing, I think your writing style is great. Uh, a novel that we're going to say we can call it. We can call these novels. Novelettes, okay. very short. The chapters are short, and they each punch. You have enough to chew on in each chapter. They can go, hey, I want to go to the next one. Go ahead. Give us a little bit about the Headless Oyster. The big uh, crisis in, in the 1800s around Kent Island was oystering. Uh, people think that, you know, it's rockfish now and crabbing. But back in the day, if you said Chesapeake Bay, people around the country thought nothing except oysters. oysters. That was it. And we all know about over-harvesting issues and pollution issues. Well, there were always skirmishes uh, amongst the water. There was oyster pirates and Virginia, the Virginia, right. Yeah. Virginia was angry. So, so there were all sorts of documented tales, even on the Chester River, where people fired cannons, the police fired back the, uh, uh, what we would call uh, today uh, the the uh, people who, who patrol the waters, uh, natural resource police. They had a Confederate running one yeah, boat yeah. and a Yankee uh, and the uh, other, and uh, all uh, types uh, of stuff. The, fir the, the first two uh, commanders were, were Confederate um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, admiralty. But anyway, the, the premise of this book is something happens during the Oyster Wars on the Chester River, uh, right next to uh, Kent Island. And today, in present times, a family member is taking out his revenge right. and he's basically the headless oysterman and random people are murdered uh basically we've he, got a state senator oh murdered. Yeah, we've oh got yeah. all types of into the selection of people little old <laughs> ladies and and there's no rhyme or reason and yeah. the police are baffled and uh this is very close to um uh, Jessica Fletcher, uh, you know, up in up in her little New England town there, Cabot Cove, where so many people are getting murdered. They're like, why Kent Island? The governor's angry. Sure, everyone's sure. angry. He's calling the sheriff He's in. Why is he calls the FBI in? Everything. FBI right? in. And and basically, they can't find this individual or why he's doing it. And 
during the course of the book, I try to educate for people who are not aware, and a lot of people who are aware, of everything oyster. Right. From what they bring to the bay, to how they're harvested, to uh, people who uh, take care. In fact, I was on our little dock today, bringing up our oysters in cages and squirting them off. They call it oyster farming, which we then donate back to the state. Right. Okay. And, and they do this. And the genesis of this book uh, is to say, this is such an integral part of Kent Island, and people are still doing it, whether they're divers, whether they're, they're, they're still going the old-fashioned way like they did on the skipjacks. And there's a big section in here about the heritage of Maryland boats, too, and, and why they were so uh, made that they could go into shallow waters. There's the anti-Virginia, anti-Long Island, New England segment right. here. And uh, I think by the time people are finished, they're anxious to see, well, who is this person yeah. and why, why, are they doing why is he doing, doing this? Yeah. But they're also going to hopefully leave saying, wow, Kent Island was in the thick of this, and Kent Island also has people who today still harvest oysters. Yeah, I mean, it was a good read. Now, I want all my deadheads to know out there, page 14, I know I'm reading this, I'm not going to say what's happening at this restaurant at a particular time, but it says, in ignorant, in ignorant irony, a DJ tried to keep the party going and distract everyone with a grateful dead classic. I will survive. And I want you to know, all the deadheads of Queen Anne's County are jumping up, so there's another reason to buy the book. Thank it's you. It's a good read, and uh, uh, all the books, I like you bring in a sheriff, and a state policeman in some of the books, and a nice portrayal of the law enforcement guy, sometimes confused so. and uh, sometimes oh, yeah. good. And now we get to Wheeler Baker and his secret <laughs> Golden Crab Society. Tell us about the final book. So well, if, if we did the geography and we did the oystering, next in sequence had mm -hmm. to be crab. Right. And we all love, if you're from Maryland, uh, it's steam crabs. And uh, I reminisce in the opening about how Dad took us to places in Baltimore and a dozen and was, crabs for $7. Yeah. And you your know. dad was, sounds like he was very strict with money. So he Well, they, they came out of the Depression, and yeah. crabs were a celebratory item. Sure. So, so basically, when we had crabs, it was a special, special occasion. So moving here to the epicenter of crabbing and all things crab, I wanted to donate a lot of time to crabbing. So... The most accomplished work on this is Mr. Werner's book, Beautiful Swimmers. And a must read. Everyone should read. Must read. And, and there's, at the end of each book, there's a small little biography for people to follow mm -hmm. up on different issues. That's a must read. And in there is a chapter, and you know, good friends of mine are, are Teddy Lee and his son Snake, who are, are down in Dominion. It was Teddy Lee's grandfather, Lester Lee, and the chicken neckers whom Mr. Werner befriended. Right. And terrific uh, story. I wish I uh, had been around when Lester was around. A tremendous man. And basically, um, this is focused on the fact that when people started switching from oystering and crabbing or doing both, uh, there were also people who were taking advantage of the watermen. So the premise of this book, again, the fictional part, is that back in 1886, at the Kerwin House, which is the center of the Heritage this Society. This is where they meet. I mean, we're not giving away anything. Yeah, this, they this meet, secret they society there. forms yeah. under the premise of protecting the watermen, protecting the rights of all crabbers, taking care of families on Kent Island. But the biggest issue for them is to be secret, sure. that no one else except these 12. Now, we've let out the fact that we suspect Wheeler Baker is probably one of these 12, but we're uh, we're not quite sure. I'm going to go down and check <laughs> Wheeler out on that. If he has a golden crab on it, we got a problem. So, so the premise in this is that uh, there's no real um, uh, murders per se in this book, but there's a lot of warnings. There's a lot of... Uh, they leave little notes. Little like notes, little and notes. the notes are the golden crab. The Collinectus sapidus, right. which means beautiful swimmers, savory or tasty. And it's a warning to anyone that you don't mess with the people of Kent Island. I get a kick at, a, at one of the meetings, and they meet Halloween night. They have two meetings a year, if I read that That's right. That's the, the Halloween nights. That's like, correct. And one of the scenes, one of the guys is saying, hey, if the world only knew out of the 12 members, six of us remember <laughs> the Knights of Columbus. Kent and how dangerous, can, how dangerous can this be? So, so yeah. again, the premise here is, and the Heritage Society is front and center, and this brings up the issue of, 
real names versus fictional sure. names. I found that after the first two books that people asked me why they weren't named specifically. So I said, okay, ask permission yeah. and I use them. Um, th this is really about the Heritage Society, so I use some real names from the Heritage Society. I mean, Society. Nancy Cook, you made an international celebrity. I saw her, I, t I mentioned off air in front of my house, I said, Nancy, you buying a guy crab cakes every night or what? You're on I, every page. I, I think the best quote <laughs> in the second book is that Martha's Vineyard has Carly Simon, right. Kent Ireland has Nancy Cook And Nancy, if people don't know, anthem. wonderful, uh, She's a wonderful teacher at Queen Anne's County High School for Lord knows how many years, and now her grandson is taking swimming lessons in my backyard. So a lot of local names. A lot of local, local names, places. and the premise of this is that the Heritage Society, even though they're secretly holding these meetings mm -hmm. in their uh, place, is trying to desperately find out for historical reasons did this society exist really? okay. did it really anybody come is about and, no and of course it's hush hush it's it's there's clues there's different things and some people are engaged in trying to find it's out it's a benevolent group oh yeah, yeah I mean, so they, they, they strong arm tactics perhaps but and, benevolent and so in this book we go instead of saying they started in 1886 and now it's now I stop at certain decades, describe what historically is going on, and what the Kalinecta Sapidus group is doing to help Kent Island. And so the, the trend of this book is, do they find out or do they not find out that this society exists? And, and there's a little and twist, a nice at, twist, the twist at the end. Twist at the end, which is very nice, which twist is very good. End. But again, all things crab in this one. So uh, geography, oyster, crabs, and then again, farming. And I, thought, I like the way you brought in the love interest, a, a lobster man <laughs> from New England, all right? Uh, and again, we're not going to go too much. And uh, another thing I enjoyed is, uh, besides a piece of cake, a number of restaurants named, obviously, where you go. and uh, Where I go and, and the people who um, uh, sell the books. Are they uh, real people? By the way, I yeah, didn't know. Yeah, okay. uh, it's, it's the Pits. Uh, Doug, it is the Pits. is a wonderful man, and okay. he supports everything Kent Island. And so he's definitely the Kent Manor Inn where they stay, uh, Baker's, um, Love Point Deli, uh, a new place that just opened, uh, the Gifted Crab, uh, how, how appropriate for the book. Um, uh, the uh, Peddler uh, a store uh, is, is just uh, wonder, wonderful people there. And I'm probably for a piece of cake bakery. So uh, beside numerous Baker's, numerous times I must say. Oh yeah, numerous <laughs> times. They they really do support the island and they support the book. And uh, the the thing that we we uh, have to mention is a portion of each book. The money, at least five hundred dollars a book, goes back to the Heritage Society. Right. And Jack Broadwood gets a couple of hellos, I believe, in oh, the yeah. last book. Or Jack is the bearded uh, sage at the Indian meeting. And then for all you Kent Island High School Buccaneers, a couple besides the wonderful artwork and the real world, a couple of nice little plugs. Uh, Absolutely, which is good. They've done they've done super, but it's been a lot of fun working and trying to do this at the same time. Uh, I've been able to come out every year, year and a half with an, a new segment. And Fred, you're absolutely correct. I try as a reader to say, what would I like short chapters, succinct, uh, knowledgeable things to talk about, but keep the story moving. Yeah, they're good, they're good it, exciting. It now, before we go on, to, I, I like to look in the future a little bit about what's coming up. I, I posted on Facebook, hey, I'm reading them this week and I got a number of hits. How do I get them? How do they get them? How, tell them where, how they can get them. Well, if, if you're not on the island and uh, want to go to one of those locations, uh, you can go right to Amazon. It's easy to work. You okay. can, all three books are on Kindle and Nook. Now, Mark, where, the, where, do you, where are they on the island? If, I, if I'm, on, if I'm the, watching this and say, hey, I don't want to okay. wait, I want them now, where do I go? Those are the places that I mentioned, and okay. if I can uh, yes, please. just okay. use this sure. so I don't miss That's anybody. That's why we have cheat sheets, yeah. Uh, it basically, the ones who are all the friends, Baker's Liquor, okay. Kent Manor Inn, Country Peddler, Piece of Cake, Gifted Crab, Love Point Deli, and It's the Pits. And tell them you're a member of the Secret Society, you might get it free. Okay. <laughs> if you can pronounce Colleen Nectar Sophitus. I had, a, I had a gentleman say to me, I got the steamed hun part, but I don't know how to say that. <laughs> That's why I just say golden crab. It's a heck of a <laughs> Let me ask you, we've got about five minutes left. Where are we going in books four and five? Okay, book you four, I mentioned yeah. about, um, you know, uh, uh, grab your, uh, pray for rain, but keep your powder dry. Kent Island 
is a wonderful magical place for especially in the old days hunting and trapping and of course farming. Uh, I tell all my friends when you come over the bridge and you see all the fast food places and the restaurants that is not Kent Island. Just come one block in and you'll see the majesty of this place. The real Kent Island. The real Kent Island from from the wonderful corn and soybean that they grow to the various vegetables and the, and the uh, fruit and produce stands and all that. That's an integral part of Kent Island, as we all know. So a lot of the old families would farm and be watermen, as you know, and, and all season long have something to do. Some, and then it got more specialized. So I want to focus on that aspect of, of Kent Island that this is so integral to us. I mean, uh, Claiborne was uh, nothing but a trader who opened a trading post. Sure. Okay. So it was all about hunting and, and trading furs and things. So I'm gonna, that's- That's the that, next one. That's book that's four. The, when's that, that, give us a, is that a probably year Probably a year, year probably okay. a year away. I have, right. I have an outline in my head, but as, as you well know, you start with something and then it, it changes, changes, and course. changes, it and changes, changes. And um, the Heritage Society, again, has been great. Uh, their last newsletter, uh, I didn't know this, would I open it up? And it's all oh, about farming. Oh, the farming. farming. Okay. And then it was wonderful stories about people. Brent Lewis does great oral traditions uh, with the Heritage Society. He's been a valuable resource. The last one will be about people. I'm thinking that might be a true ghost story, but really about the people who are part of Kent Island. Okay, so. okay. So we'll have more locals. Now, Mark, look, my time's about out. So let's just remind everybody, three guys, my audience, Three wonderful books, and again, let's remind everybody, if you want them, you can get them on Amazon or the traditional routes, but if I, I'm sitting on Kent Island, I want that book for this weekend, read, read again where they can get this book. Baker's Liquor, Kent Manor Inn, The Country Peddler, Piece of Cake, Fine Pastries, and they'll give you a free pastry if you say The Golden Shell. All right, okay. Uh, I'm sure they'll like that. The Gifted <laughs> Crab, Love Point Deli, and It's the Pits. And what we're doing, Fred, is each book is... Fifteen ninety-five, but we bundled them together uh, as uh, one of the uh, people uh, heroines down at uh, Baker's. Miss Jordan calls it the trilogy. Oh, the trilogy. We'll sell it for a special price. Okay. At 40 By the way, is, uh, don't give too much away. In the scene at Baker's Liquor, the hot. <laughs> the uh, what should I say? It the uh, fire breathing dragon. Yeah. Is that? A well, real person is a combination. I, I didn't have to go far. Everybody points okay. to uh, Jordan, and okay. uh, she is... I believe I taught Jordan. She had, uh, really? Yeah. She, she is great. Her father, we laugh all the time, and I think Jordan is such a celebrity now that she's probably signing the books. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, Mark, look, at, thank you for Fred, being here. thank you. Right. You're a good man. Hey, I want everyone to know, if you want a delightful read, Mark Ladinsky's, we'll call it the trilogy or whatever Jordan tells me to call it, right? <laughs> Get them. They're fun. Everyone from Nancy Cook, The Grateful Dead, Pirates, <laughs> Horsemen Without Heads, you name it, we've got it, all right? Uh, I'm Fred McNeil. Thanks for being with us. Please get some of these books. Uh, my time's up. Thank you for your time, and we're going to see you next time. <laughs>